Quest. Discover more with the Artok Group. If they are lucky, those talented dogs that can act may eventually end up on a real-life, full-sized movie set. We have a, a little puppy now that just started with us called Colby. And Colby's a major movie star. All you agents out there, <laughs> you want to know about, about Colby. Kobe is one of the tail wagging talents sharing this film set with the screen legend Richard Gere. Take 36, take two. Mark. Films like American Gigolo, An Officer and a Gentleman, and Pretty Woman made Gere a household name. His latest project is Hachiko, a dog story. The film is being shot in the US state of Rhode Island. It's an emotional tale of one dog's lifelong devotion to its owner. Why did you decide this was a film you wanted to do? I'll tell you, the script was sent to me by my agent, and he said, look, you're co-starring with a dog in this movie, but I want you to read it anyhow. If I don't have a visceral response, I know I'm never going to make the movie. I can't make that happen. And I read the script, and I started crying like a baby. The story of Hachiko is based on the 1920s real-life story of Hachiko, named the Faithful Dog. Every day, Hachiko goes to the train station to greet his owner home from work. And even after his master dies, this dog keeps up the routine for an incredible 10 years. He just waits. And there's, there's something incredibly powerful about that. When you have a special relationship with an animal, it is something quite extraordinary. And it can be described probably only in the realm of poetry, what that is. On the day I visit the set, they are filming a simple scene. The dog is walking back alone from the station. On the way, he receives scraps of food from the local butcher. The dog has to be trained to walk, All right, Chico. stop, Stay. scratch, and then walk again. In Hollywood terms, this is a simple scene for the animal actor. But there are rehearsals again and again. Speak. Good. All right. Second mark. And eventually, the take. It takes huge amounts of work to ensure that the dog gets this simple scene right. As I watch, it becomes clear there are strict rules being followed when working with animals. Rules which are monitored by the American Humane Association. Nothing happens here without their approval. We're all about the welfare of the animals, making sure that the animals are safe, secure, sound, they have what they need. Basically, we are the voice for the animal on the movie set. It is a powerful voice. For more than five decades, American Humane has been the only organization that can give the Hollywood seal of approval to movies that involve animals. It's important because it very much reassures the public that even if they see something that looks dangerous, if we're on set, they know that no harm came to the animal. It's a very, very hard job and there are very few people that do it. We only have 10 American Humane Safety Reps on full-time staff and about 25 or 35 that are on call all around the nation and all around the world. Marissa Bayliss. She's one of those representatives. The dog's well-being is her one and only concern. What's your role here? I'm a certified animal safety representative. Right, what are you doing? Well, right now yeah. I am documenting this scene and to make sure that no animals are being ill-treated in any way. Okay. Basically what I'm looking for are the safety elements involved. I'm making sure that the dog is focused on its trainers, that no obstacles are going to obstruct the dog's action, that the traffic is going to be blocked off, that even what the actor is going to be feeding the dog is edible for the dog. In case they have to do a lot of takes, you have to make sure that the animal can digest that. You have the authority to stop everything. What is it you shout? If it got to worst case scenario, I would shout unauthorized shot and make production and crew fully aware that the scene that was about to go through would be going against American Humane guidelines for the safe use of animals in film media. I speak for the animals, you know, everybody else has a choice to be here, but they don't. To be sure, on a reputable full-scale movie like this, she expects few problems. But the rules are non-negotiable. If you want the words, no animals were harmed on your screen credit, you have to follow what Marissa says. 
That's not a problem for Boon Na, one of America's top animal handlers. He's worked with American Humane for years. And whether it's lizards, leopards, ants or elephants, he's trained the lot. What is the window of memory for the dog? Well, actually, these Akitas are really smart, you know. They're some of the probably the hardest dogs we've ever trained. And I think what it is is that they're so smart, they're a little stubborn. In a lot of our movies, we're always teaching them tricks. And tricks are easy to train, but to train emotion, this dog has to be emotional. You have to, we have to show that he has these strong feelings, and I have to make that dog look like he belongs to the actor that's in the movie and not the trainer behind the camera. You're gonna call me and go, you know what? This dog pulled at my heartstrings because I think I'm a pretty tough guy, but I gotta tell you, when I finish that script at the end, there's tears rolling down. This is a very emotional bond between these two. That bond, that kinship, it's the very essence of my journey this month. Because here in Rhode Island, I may be about to discover what makes dogs man's best friend. I think dogs are unique because they have such an emotional intelligence about them that they can communicate in a deeper way than humans can because they don't rely on a voice, on, on speech. Vicky's passion to make this movie of Hachiko began two decades ago. She fell in love with the story during a visit to Japan when she saw a bronze statue of the dog. I was so smitten that a couple years later when I got a dog, I named him Hachiko. He was a Japanese Shiba, actually. And he was my best friend for 16 years. Vicky's ambition is to portray the life and the emotions of a dog. This vision is shared by the director, Lasse Halstrom, who is no stranger to working with hounds. I have lots of experience with dogs. I made a movie called My Life as a Dog. So. I have been drawn to dogs and kids in, in most of my movies, <laughs> despite all the warnings. But in this case, it's been a breeze because the trainers are so fantastic, really. Richard Gere may be the two-legged star of this film, but even he's under no illusion who the eye-catchers really are on this movie. They have four legs and a tail. And it's when these animal actors show emotion that the audience's heartstrings will truly be tugged. They all have personalities like people do. There's no one in this room right now who's not eccentric in some way. Everyone's smiling. Yes, it's all true. But yes, even you, sir. Especially me, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want to say I that. I just beat you to it, that's all. <laughs> Cast and crew alike recognize real talent when they see it. From producer to director to actor, show anyone here a puppy like this, they may well go, ah. They also want to say, oh yes, no animals were harmed. Still to come, she's a singing sensation, but Joss Stone never travels without her faithful companions. And I'm back in Panama to see the benefits of using therapy dogs to help sick children. <laughs> <laughs>